nonsense and nonsensibility. A small disclaimer before I start the poem. I wrote this poem before I read off or read Flatland and its derivatives. My inspiration was a talk in which this concept was merely mentioned. In any case, uh, I think I am talking about some other things as well other than just uh, the concept of a flat land. So here's the poem. What if Manu lived on a flat earth, a real flat earth, not an economist's wet dream? What if the god of just such a world were Euclides, inhabitants, polygons and other 2D geometric shapes? Manu, I am sure, would find the Dvijas, the twice born, to be the quadrangles and above. The hexagons would be the Brahmins, the intellectuals. The pentagons should be the Rajanyas, the overlords. The quadrilaterals could be the Vaishyas, the accumulators. Of course, the Shudras, the workers must be triangles. The Antyajas or the untouchables. Hmm. Almost certainly, these would be line segments. Invisible, unidimensional, with infinite sharpness, these would surely defile, deface, debunk, desecrate, degrade, defoul, depress, despoil, disgrace, dishonor, depreciate, devalue, deflower, and most importantly, deflate the enclosed spaces and leave behind a lifeless mess of entangled curved line segments. No wonder the Dalits remained and remain oppressed. What of the queers, the most self-enslaving idiots that ever slid across the flat earth. Hmm, tough question. These must be the circles with no angles and yet infinite number of angles lacking straight sides and yet having an infinite number of the same the shape that every higher polygon approximates better to. These are not shapes any self-respecting polygon can respect. Manu would certainly approve. The flat earth, I'm sure, would be a very happening place. Polygons milling about, the downtown with wonderful traffic system, white polygons looking down upon, oh no, there is no down to look upon, looking askance at the brown and the yellow, who in turn would forward the sentiment to the more 
deeply colored there would perhaps be no need to work for polygons need no clothes no houses for there can be no rain nor sun to protect oneself from perhaps there will be plots where one parks oneself but yes there may be a wind well you can just line your plot with some dalits on work visa and your children can call them rafiqs ouch no freedom from work but really where will the children come from i mean how will a polygon have sex with another one you cannot get on top of another polygon that you may find delicious perhaps the two will just merge and form a new one and keep dropping points every once in a while who will grow up to be nice and healthy young polygons what of eating hmm quite certainly that will also entail merging wow what a lovely place two of my most favorite activities merging into one well life will go on in this two dimensional world parallel to which unconceived by manu there could indeed most certainly would be zillions of unseen 2d universes each complete in itself each connected to the rest in such a way that there is no impact on any polygonal life from across the third dimension thus no polygon alive ever sensed or ever needed to develop a sense that would sense another world just a point across in the unknown third dimension thus all the polygonal 2d manus and moses and muhammads inspired all kinds of certainties in all of these complete yet incomplete 2d universes connected and yet unconnected to the one just barely a point across what if the 3d manu and other patriarchal males or even m theorists similarly fail to sense the reality just across in the fourth dimension 